Next project is fixing the skid plate. It's cracked right here. I'm going to cut a lot of this piece out. That's probably why that's cracked is kept hitting stuff on that lip. It's cracked right here. It's broken here. This is the back side of the skid plate. And this lip right here is always getting hung up on whatever you're riding over. So I am going to cut a big portion out of this uh, lip in the back here so it doesn't hit everything. And I think it's why uh, this may have cracked here, it's cracked here. And my plasma cutter is only 110 volt and it's not plugged into a 20 amp outlet so it's not even touching this eighth inch thick aluminum I'm trying to cut. So I have these specialty aluminum cutting discs made by Say It and they're specifically for aluminum. If you don't use one for aluminum, you're supposed to use this special coating. Some people try beeswax. Say it also makes a grinding stone for aluminum. So I don't know how many of you have tried to grind aluminum with a steel grindstone. All they do is clog up. Wrong grinder.
Another thing I'm doing is replacing this chain wear strip. And this being broken, it got a little chewed up. Apparently these rivets are steel. Nice and straight now. Or straight enough for a skid plate. I got this piece of wood to lift my anvil off the floor. Now I can actually hit this angle. The floor is not flat, and the piece of wood's bowed. I don't have an easy way to clamp this down, so I figure a 50 pound anvil should be pretty good. in a steel wire brush.
Now the problem I've noticed trying to stick weld aluminum is if you're trying to stick weld aluminum that's too thin, you just melt right through it. And they only make, what is this, eighth inch? This is eighth inch Hobart 4043. And they make um, 330 seconds, nothing smaller. Mainly because I don't think they can. Try 70 amps. So it says 70 to 120 amps. better. You also get this wicked milky flag that's a lot of fun to take off. Now when the end gets um, covered with flux, I just drag it on the concrete floor. And that's what, an inch and a half, two inches of bead, and I've already used more than half the electrode. Which makes stick welding aluminum pretty expensive. Compared to other rod, horizontal only, because as you can see, slag runs downhill, like water. And there's a problem. I don't know how to fill that gap with aluminum rod. As I tried to just put a bead on one side, it just melted it. Guess I need to lower my amperage then.
I got something that resembles dimes, but. Also, aluminum rod you want to keep as dry as possible because it gets a little bit wet and it just turns to mush. Thankfully, I found that out because uh, I left the electrode in the electrode holder overnight during the summer. And I went to start using it and just fell apart. I was at 90 amps for welding the smaller gap. Now I'm at 70 for this big one. Just a couple of drags on the floor. You got something to work with. I think the biggest learning curve for aluminum is the feed, the rate at which you have to feed the electrode. You know, it's just like rolling down over the sides. I think that's the last one for that joint. Now it's going to be that weld it broke. I'm going to do next. Probably crank my amper back up. 90, 90 amps on DC electrode, positive. turned out.
I don't really know what this anvil weighs. It's a lot. It's a piece of railroad tie, I think 10 inches long, and a piece of one inch thick steel plate that's probably 10 by 14 inches long. Whatever the goldish um, coating is on this table, aluminum sticks to it. For some reason, they ran a full bead on the uh, brake side, and then they skipped these two spots for the chain side. I think my last weld is going to be right in here. Same as the other side, I really can't get in there with the grinder, but I really don't think it's going to hurt anything leaving it. Next thing, and last thing before remounting, is to put a new wear strip on. I think when, what I'm going to use is this stuff. It's made by a company called Nudu. And I believe this stuff is about $1,400 a sheet. Yes, $1,400 for a 4x8 sheet. And it's actually black black anodized aluminum with um, the same plastic they use on four-wheelers in the middle of it. And because aluminum is non-ferrous, like steel, you can cut it with a standard carbide blade. try that at home or anywhere I also have
quarter inch thick ATV plastic, but it's white. Now to adhere the wear strip to the skid plate, I'm gonna be using 3M's VHB. This is a little bit better than the stuff used on GoPro mounts. The reason I say it's better, it has a higher and lower temperature rating than what GoPro uses. The reason they don't use this stuff is because it's something like 10 times the cost. Carburetor cleaner, brake parts cleaner, works great for cleaning surfaces, just not if they're paint or plastic. And all I have to do is bolt it up to the machine, I'm done. Now all I have to do is bolt it up to the machine, and it's done.